As I mentioned, my name is Chad Richardson. I'm originally from Sumter, South Carolina. Went to Clemson University, got a degree in health science in undergrad, and then a master's degree in educational counseling. Um, I'm really into mentoring. I love music, hanging out with my friends, anything to make somebody smile. Um, overall, I just love to have a good time. Um, really simple guy, enjoy fitness and working out. Um, but other than that, I'm just really excited to be here today um, interviewing with your institution. Yo, who was that guy? What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Chad, aka Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget the student. And today we're back again with some more free game. Okay, and today, very important topic, we're going to be discussing interview season. So it is now um, September the 19th. So right now, colleges, well, not the medical universities across the nation are conducting their own interviews. We know this year it's virtual, but I have some very useful interview keys, whether your interview is in person, virtual, outside your mom and them house. It doesn't matter who, what, when, where, or how. If you have an interview, I want you to listen to these tips, listen to these strategies, and I promise you, you will walk in confident and walk out even more confident about your performance. Before we get into the information, I just wanna say I appreciate you guys' support. Continue to like, subscribe, refer to a friend, get everybody involved. Let's continue to let this channel grow. Now, on to the information for today. I wanna to talk about you guys actually performing in front of the person, conducting a very solid, conversational, and comfortable interview. All right, so now you got your interview invite, you know what it is, you're setting it up, and now you're trying to prepare for, okay, all these kinds of questions, what's gonna happen? The very first thing I advise for students to do when you're talking about an interview is to read your study guide. So what students will come to me a lot of the times and wonder if they should do is kind of research like the top 20 most asked interview questions and kind of practice their answers, which is cool, but that's not, that's not the way that I teach this, this strategy. I want you to think of this as your professor, biology, for example, has given you have a hundred question test at the end of the semester, right? And they give you a study guide and say, hey, on your test, here are some of the topics that will be covered. And you look at the, the document, and it's 100 things. So you must figure, hey, these 100 little study guide themes, I'll just answer all of these and then remember my answers verbatim, and that's what's gonna be on the test. Show up for the test. The test is actually only three questions instead of the 100, and it's the three questions that you don't re remember from your sheet of paper. Now you are messed up. Well, had you just studied the content that was presented and just got a great foundational understanding of it, you would be great. And it's the same thing for your interview, guys. And guess what? You don't even have to study because the information is yourself. Oh, let's think about this. So all I want you to do is come to a great understanding of yourself. Who are you? What do you enjoy? What do you like? If you're confused about it, Ask your best friend, ask your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mom, your dad, brother, sister, cousin, it doesn't matter. Ask the people who know you best about who you are because we want you to walk into that with no doubts, knowing exactly who you are, what you're about, why you're here, why you want, what you wanna do in the future and how you can be a beacon of light to the community and a service to the communities at large. This is what you wanna showcase on any interview that you go into, especially into medical school. So keep that in mind because I'm gonna focus on a lot of the conceptual understanding so that you don't have to think too hard on your interview day. I want you to be the best you can be naturally. All right, so the next small detail before we get to the big thing is so if you're in person, this is a lot different because you would have had to have traveled and maybe stay at a hotel and everything like that. But even when it's virtual, I think this is worth noting. So all of us are not the most social people and that's fine, right? So if you're very, very social, don't worry about it the night before, just get your rest get your coffee and wake up bright eyed bushy tail the next morning and you'll be ready. We'll get to your part next. But if you're one of the more reserved individuals and you kind of have a social meter that you have, what is what I need for you to do the night before is I need for you to store up all of your social meter and just hold on to it because you're going to need it the next day. 
okay? Because you're gonna talk to a lot of people, you're gonna be on a visual interface with people, and we the last thing we want is for your social butterfly to have its wings fall off in the middle of your interview day, okay? And I'll explain why this is very important as we go through, but store up all your social energy, rest well, get some good sleep, put your clothes out the night before on the bed, make sure you're looking fly, and I want you to have wake up in the morning, bright eyed, bushy tail, ready to take on the world. Speaking of clothes on the bed, what to wear? Virtual or not, you're wearing the same attire. The only difference is you might have on bottoms. Personally, I probably would go ahead and get the full suit attire, even if you're virtual. And the reasoning is if you have to get up of some kind, like you never know what people may ask in an interview setting, just, it's always about being more safe than sorry. So I see no harm in getting, you know, head to toe dressed, even if you're virtual. If you're in person, please get head to toe dressed, please. All right, so for my fellas, I'm gonna speak personally to you guys, cause you know, we're the same. What you wanna wear is always a conversation because people will tell you that you wanna be basic. Your interview is not the time to show your personality. I don't subscribe to that, all right? So I, I do believe that you, you don't wanna be flamboyant. You don't want to, basically the rule of thumb is your outfit should not take away from the words that you are saying. So if someone is so much more inclined to look at what you're wearing versus what you're saying, you probably want a little overboard. Typically what that means is no bright colored suits, um, no large jewelry chains like this over a suit would not be great. Um, but I think there's nothing wrong with having a very nice pocket square or uh, a tie clip or um, having a, a lapel pin, as long as it's not exaggerant and bright and colored. So for instance, for my interview day, fellas, I had on a navy suit with my Clemson tie, Clemson pin, and then a pocket square, okay? And I got great comments about, oh my goodness, you must have went to Clemson. And you know, we're in South Carolina, everybody and their mama went to Clemson. So it's a great conversation starter. So think about things like that when you're, when you're getting dressed. But naturally, if you have style, go for your style, but be conservative in your style is basically what I'm saying. If you're one of the people who are like, this may be the first time you're putting on a suit or like the 10th time you're putting on a suit in your life, then stick to the basics. But dark suits, your black, your navy, um, your charcoal gray, you know, good shoes, belt, ties, make sure you're matching. If you don't know if you're matching or not, put it under the light. And if these colors are clashing, meaning you're like, uh, if it's a question, don't put it on, okay? But just very basics and you will be fine. On every interview day, whether it's virtual or in person, your first, um, communication with that university will be them giving you some sort of information about what they offer to you as students. And this is a time where your excitement is going, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm almost a student. And you can either fall into the trap of two things, which is being so excited that you're not listening to anything, and you're just bouncing off the walls, and at the end of the presentation, you actually have no idea what the school is about. The other way you fall into a trap is kind of being so nervous, so anxious, or maybe even so bored that you're still not listening and not engaged in what's being um, presented. The right thing to do is to come in and understand that just as though they are interviewing you, you are interviewing them because you're trying to figure out if this is the place that you truly want to spend the most pivotal four years of your life. Um, so when they're giving you the presentations on financial aid, curriculum, student affairs, support staff, like these are the things you want to pay attention to for two reasons. One, again, this is one of the most important decisions of your life, where you're going to become a woman, a man, well, a better woman, a better man, a better physician, and a better person overall for at least the next four years. Okay. The other reason why you want to listen to this is because this may be a source of questions that you can ask later. And we all know that it's very important to be able to have questions at the end of an interview. You want them to feel like you are interested in this institution. It shows that you care, that you are involved. Okay. Um, if you have brought like a little binder or something to write your questions down, that's perfectly fine. My tip was if you didn't find out who was interviewing you until the day of, right? 
let's say you just you just found out once you get on the call or once you get in person that this person is interviewing you and you see what they do then this is the time to kind of figure out okay well you, they said this in the presentation let me ask them about this so it's a good strategy to listen just in general but it's an even better strategy to listen so that you can be able to ask questions and follow up later showing your attention and that you care so now it's showtime and this is the the main portion of this that i want to get across to you guys if you get nothing else this is what i want you to get when you're talking about your interview when it comes to interview questions i understand that the the inclination is to just kind of know what's coming to you but there's no way you can predict what any interviewer is going to ask you because everybody has their own interview style their own interview points that they want to get to it can go every which way in an interview. I'm, I'm sorry, every school is different, every person is different, so I can't tell you exactly what each school is gonna ask you. What I can tell you is that if you know yourself and you're patient in your answers, you are able to answer anything with confidence, right? And I know everybody's wondering like, but what if they don't like it? Well, if you're being yourself and you practice to be the best version of yourself on that day, if that institution does not like it, then it's probably not the best place for you because why? You can't change who you are. So keep that confidence and walk in and say, this is the best version of me, here I am, right? So let's talk about how to make sure the best version of you is being presented in your answer. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of very common questions and I wanna talk through the approach of how you should go about thinking about your answer. This is how you practice beforehand, not necessarily rehearsing, but thinking about what this question is asking you and what you want to get across. All right, case in point, one of the most famous first things they ask you when you come through the door is, tell me about yourself. Well, um, as I mentioned, my name is Chad Richardson. I'm originally from Sumter, South Carolina, went to Clemson University, got a degree in health science in undergrad, and then a master's degree in educational counseling. Um, I'm really into mentoring, I love music, hanging out with my friends, anything to make somebody smile. Um, overall, I just love to have a good time. Um, really simple guy, enjoy fitness and working out. Um, but other than that, I'm just really excited to be here today um, interviewing with your institution, okay? And I know a lot of people hate that question because it's so wide open, but from an interviewer standpoint, I love the question because it allows me to learn about the applicant from the time they walk into the door. Right. Obviously, we may have been having some small talk, but the first key point interview question I love to ask to tell me about yourself question. So it is wide open, but here's what an interviewer is trying to get out of you from this question. I think that's the most important part as an interviewee. Understand what they are asking you. Tell me about yourself. This is your first chance to make an impression. You know how they say the first impression is the most la is the lasting impression? Well, this is your first impression. And it's not a wrong answer to this question, but it will kind of determine, okay, well, this is who this person is. It's, I only have what you tell me. So if you answer the question in a very, uh, I'm gonna, okay, here we go. If I say, tell me about yourself, and your answer is, well, I have a, three brothers and sisters. I live at home with my parents. We live on a farm. I love to hang out with my cousins and family members. We take a lot of vacations. Um, yeah, if you start in that, well, what does this tell you about this person? They're a large family person. It means a lot to them to be close to their family, right? And so you get this vibe from them. They're probably very caring and all like you, you get that impression from them. And so if that's not who you are, understand that when you're practicing your questions. And if it is who you are, then own that. Let them know exactly what matters to you the most and they can figure out this is the kind of student that I'm dealing with. It's okay. It's not a wrong or right thing. We just want to be the best representation of you. On the flip side, if they say, tell me about yourself. And your answer is, well, I've enjoyed medicine my entire life. I've done a lot of research with uh, biochemical experimentation and, and mice and regeneration and um, I went to this shadowing trip and I've been to Uganda to do mission work. Well, this person tells me they are straight to the point, right? They are about their business. They enjoy the sciences. They're highly uh, scientific, logistical kind of a person. And again, if that is who you are at your core, there's no problem with that. Own it, be who you are. But if that's not who you are, then why answer in that manner? Just be yourself. As you saw at the beginning of the video, 
I talked about the things that truly mattered to me. Mentoring, music, laughing, having fun. Like, that's what I want my interviewer to know. As an interviewee, use this question as a time to set yourself up to understand this is how you want your interview to go. This is how you want to gain some control, right? So use that question. Don't let that question abuse you by its vast profile, okay? You have control by if you answer the question saying exactly who you are at your core. Sound good? Another very common question that comes up, and I'll say 100% of your uh, interviews for medical school or insert whatever kind of school you're going to, they're gonna ask you in some way or form this kind of question. So why did you choose insert school? In my case, why did you choose medicine? What you want to talk about in this question, I need for you to put in parentheses behind the why you want to choose medicine and in parentheses and not anything else, right? And not nursing and not PA and not PT, right? or not police officer. And everybody's like, why? Like, why do we need this distinction? Because a very common answer is because I want to help people. And while this is great, how many career paths can you do that will allow you to help people? All right, okay, let's just think about it. If you work at McDonald's, you helped a lot of people. You help feed people. If you are a police officer, you help the entire community. If you are a teacher, you're helping the kids learn. Every at every job in public service will allow you to help somebody. So why not why physicians, right? And if you say, oh, I've always enjoyed medicine in itself, well, why not a nurse? Well, why not PT? Why not you know a pharmacist? You know, a lot, all of these things deal in medicine of some sort. So you really have to. I know I'm busting your bubble, but you really have to zero in on what is it about becoming a physician a doctor of medicine that appeals to you. And what that will force you to do when you kind of get at that question from that angle, it will force you to look at all of your experiences, your shadowing, your clinical experiences, and come up with a very, very concrete answer of, I've taken my time to sacrifice and say, okay, I've seen this, I've seen that. And the only career that will work for me is becoming a physician because, right? And it takes you having to kind of understand what all the roles of a physician are, right? And I'm not gonna spoil this answer by telling you what you should and shouldn't say because I don't believe that my answer is gonna work for you too. But understand that you, if you wanna have a great interview, it's important for you to understand why you chose to go to medical school to become a physician, right? That's a very simple statement, but understand what was your, why did you choose to go to medical school to become a physician, parentheses, and not anything else, right? Ponder that, think on that. So next up, kind of a two-part question comes up really, really often. And you know, students know that there's a, a quote unquote no-no. And I don't really look at anything as a wrong answer. I think it's more about how you explain yourself. But in this question specifically, you'll get some variation of, you know, what is your biggest strength? And what's your biggest weakness or area to improve on? So, for strengths, right? Let's think about what this question is asking you. This question is asking you, what do you feel like is your strongest quality? But let's read, read between the lines of what one of my mentors in college used to say, do you hear what I didn't say? Right? So when someone asks you what your strongest quality is, it's not a time for you to try to think of your best quality and what's going to impress them the most. I, I get what you're thinking about, but I need for you to understand what will make this a very strong answer. Whatever your strongest quality is, I should see it in you when I interview you and when I look at your application, okay? So if you're gonna tell me that your strongest quality is your communication skills, right? The honest thing as an interviewer for us to start looking at is, um, how strong are you communicating with me right now at this current moment? If somebody says that their communication skills is their strongest quality, I should be already enamored with their ability to speak to me. I should be seeing leadership all over the application because they are great at getting across their point, right? So understand that whatever your strongest quality is, you need to have it be demonstrated 
through your actions, your interview currently, your application, something along these lines, your, your letters of rec should kind of corroborate your story. Something along these lines should, should point to that this is your strongest quality because without that evidence, this is just a claim. And while it can be a correct thing, it's not the strongest part of you. See what I'm saying? Like the, the question is, what's your strongest quality, your biggest strength? Right? If it's your biggest one, we need to see it. And I should see it in your application because it brings the it brings together the whole profile of you as an applicant. Right? It's not about what you want to be, it's about who you are. So let's make sure that that's being showcased. On the flip side, what is the thing that you have to improve on? What's your weakest one? And the most common answer and people it's common, but people know not to do it too. So it's really, really weird. And we all know it's some variation of you saying that you're a perfectionist or you try too hard, or you're too big on the detail. Like, I get it, I really do, but my question to you when you say that is, is that really a weakness, right? Is it, like, is it, and it's not necessarily me telling you that like, no, you don't struggle with that. When that question is asked, what do you, what is a weakness for you, what is your, area of improvement, I want you to think about what is the thing that every single day you have to consistently try to get better at because you know it will make you a better person, right? If you're trying to tell someone that you get too far into the details or that you're a perfectionist, that is a quality that a lot of people would hope to have. So it's hard sometimes to tell your interviewer that and if your interview with somebody is like, man, I wish I could have that skill, that's not going to be the strongest, you know, that's not going to be the strongest answer for you because why would I desire to have a weakness of yours? That makes sense. Why would another person desire to have the thing that you say hinders you the most? And if you think about it, it probably doesn't hinder you. You would just rather it not be there for your comfort, right? I'll go ahead and give you like my, and this one was the perfect one for me to give you my answer on my interview because I still tell people this and I remember my interview where her eyes got really big until I gave her the, the background of it. And so with this question, it's important to give context, right? And context means, okay, this is something that I'm working on, right? Constantly. And what have, how did I learn about it? And then what am I doing to consistently get better at it, right? So for me, she's like, Chad, so tell me what's an area that you consistently have to work on. Well, naturally, I'm a selfish person. So, <laughs> huh? I said, well, let me explain. So it's kind of funny. When I was younger, like four or five years old, um, I was that kid or younger brother that when it was my brother's birthday, and he's four and a half years older than I am. When it was his birthday, I felt like I deserved like presents or some kind of recognition too, right? Like I wanted I, I wanted to be in the spotlight, right? And all my friends know, like you put a camera on me and a mic, let's go. And it, it's still to this day. But when I was younger, it was really bad. Like definitely getting scolded or beaten from my mom because she would always have to say like, it's not about you, right? And at five, it's really hard to understand. But as you get older, and I told my interviewer this, I said, you know, as I got older, I started realizing that if, if I, could make people feel, if I could make others feel the way that I feel about myself all the time, it's much more rewarding than trying to make sure that the focus is always on me. But that doesn't mean that every day I'm not having to remind myself like, yo, hey, yo, chill, it's not about you. So I consistently have been working on it since I was seven, eight or whatever. And now I've gotten to a point to where I'm not having to like think twice, it's more natural to be you know, more giving, more compassionate, more altruistic, more, you know, about other people's happiness. And that's why I created this channel for you guys. It's through that journey to understand, like, if I can make other people feel how I always feel, which is wanting the spotlight, being very confident, being the person who like wants to have all this attention. If I can give that attention to somebody else and see them light up, like how I always feel inside, like it's so much more rewarding, right? And that, Guess what it does? Guess what kind of answer it is? One, it explains that that's, that's actually something I really had to work on. And it's like self, being selfish is not something somebody wants. That's the first thing. Two, it shows that I've actually had to think about this, okay? And I'm still working on it, right? 
And like, it's now kind of grown into something that I can say will help me in my future career because that's really how I look at the patients that I'm interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. Like they are hurting. I feel really bad that they're hurting and they can't, you know, feel the way that they want to feel. And I want to try to make them feel better about themselves or about their situation. So something of that matter, I want you to really think about that thing that has been deep down. You have to be vulnerable. Like you, you cannot, it's a question that requires you to be vulnerable. And that's an uncomfortable feeling as medical students, as medical, as medical school applicants. We're not used to that. We're used to everything kind of going our way, we're in control. But this is one of those questions where you have to be vulnerable and really tell about the core of who you are. The more that you do that and explain your process of getting through it, the stronger you'll look in your, in your interview. Okay. So let's talk about your approaches to um, questions about like your activities. But really, you know, when somebody's asking you about your experiences or a experience that you have on your application, we want to know what it, what's the value in this? Like, what did you find, you know, what did you find purpose in this for? Because everything on your application should be something that's close to you in, in value and in purpose. So the way I always taught myself to interview, because I've never had like formal interview training, I just started thinking about, okay, well, when they ask me this, like, what do you really want to know? So the way that you want to look at when someone's asking you about a experience or any experience is the same things when you put on your application that I teach students is you want to get across what was the activity. So explain it to them as if they have absolutely no idea. All these groups in college, I know we got acronyms and pseudonyms and, and all that, but you know, whatever it was in college, act like your interviewer has never heard of it. So explain what it was, what was your role, and kind of what was that impact of what you learned. When discussing the things on your application and experiences, you need to have in mind those key points. And when you talk about the key points, you wanna make sure that you're highlighting something about yourself through these activities. So for instance, I had about three to four experiences in my mind that I knew were gonna be able to uh, demonstrate the qualities that I wanted to get across. So if somebody were to ask me about leadership, I knew I was gonna talk about my certain, you know, starting a club from scratch, right? If somebody was to talk about like teamwork, then I knew I was gonna talk about football or I was gonna talk about, you know, this and that, and I knew what to highlight. So it's about understanding what experience is meant for what quality to highlight what, what thing within yourself, right? If you can organize your mind like that, it's so much easier. You don't have to sit here and try to remember answers. You know, you know, Spanish club was meant to talk about your community involvement and your growth in becoming bilingual, right? And you may have like a story to go along with it. Like it's such like a, it's like an algorithm. Each experience can have story, a category, right? Which is leadership, community involvement, whatever. And then the impact. What'd you learn, what'd you do? and you, you've organized your mind in that manner, you can talk freely, because you know somebody can ask that question so many different ways. Tell me about a time in your leadership. Boom, just go back to the experience. Tell me about this experience. Go to your leadership. Like, see how easy that is? So think about your experiences in that manner, right? Organize them by what was the experience? What did it teach you? What category does it fall into? And then just make sure that you have those things ready, like a tool belt. Right, you walk into the interview, they ask you, you know, a question, mm, I got it. Pull out my hammer tool to answer that question, boom. So the last big thing for interviews that most places will wanna get into in some way, shape or form, especially in this year's climate, will be ethical issues, right? And it's a very stressful thing for medical students because you're like, we're not medical professionals. We don't understand ethical issues, that's it. That's great logic to have, right? Because how how can you, as a, a like an applicant, be a professional or a a leading person in understanding ethical situations with per, like pertinent medical knowledge if you don't have the medical knowledge? Come on. So yeah, think like that because that allows you to understand more about why we're asking you ethical questions. We want to see your critical reasoning. Are you able to think through a problem and give an opinion, right? Give an educated opinion about the information presented to you, okay? And then how do you respond to criticism? If I'm your interviewer and I go right back at you, 
what you gonna do? So you say, you know, personally, I feel like physician assistant suicide um, should not be done, right? And do you say, personally, my ethics are completely against physician assistant suicide. I feel like it's essentially murder, right? Well, if I'm an interviewer and I just wanted to play devil's advocate, I could say, well, what if one of your patients had a poor prognosis and they were just living and suffering against all medications and they were just writhing in pain on the medical bed and the only way they had already asked you, the family had okayed it and it was legal. Then what? You know, so what are you going to, what, what's your response going to be to that? Right? Are you going to get upset that I, that I challenged you? Are you going to wilt beneath the pressure and say, well, well I, I think you're right. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I now, now my morals align with your morals so we can be friends. Right? Or are you going to stand your ground and say, you know, I appreciate that sentiment, but personally, I feel like that's just against moral ethics to essentially kill someone. I could not do that. Right? And I think it's whatever you feel comfortable with. So the thing to, the no-no is to become belligerent, right? I mean, you don't want to get upset with your interviewer. It's just not a good thing. But when presented with new information, then you can come up with a new conclusion. As long as you're taking into account the information presented to you and then saying, well, given this information, I think I would have to think about it. But if my personal ethics are completely against the situation, I would have to probably call upon someone else to, to take out, to carry out the associated task. I believe the patient has a right, but it's just not something that I feel comfortable with. All right? No harm, no foul. I think that these ethics questions are mainly meant to analyze your critical reasoning. Can you give an opinion, give a reason why, and give an educated response? Right? If someone has a differing opinion from you, it's about listening to their differing opinion, finding your uh, commonalities, finding where you disagree, and being able to have a healthy conversation about what it is that you are disagreeing about. If you choose to agree, that's great. If you choose to disagree, that's great too. But as long as you have a respectful conversation, that's how true growth occurs. And that's what these questions are about, right? If you, if you don't know, if they're asking you about something that you're just not educated on, it's okay to say, oh, I'm not too familiar with that. Would you mind letting me know? And that will allow you to listen and maybe have an opinion. Right, so don't get stressed out over questions that may be, you know, ethically or out of your knowledge base. You know, you're not expected to have any sort of medical knowledge in the first place. That's why you wanna to go to medical school. You've got experiences, but you don't have any medical knowledge, all right? So don't let that question trick you or make you afraid to answer. It's okay, have an opinion, have educated knowledge to back it up with descriptions or details, whatever you need, listen to the new information given to you, and then come up with another opinion that may agree or disagree, as long as you're respectful with your interview. So that wraps up my talk about interviews. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if there's something you wanna know, let me know in the comments. I'll, I've done kind of interviewing workshops with students before. I think they liked it. So if you want more, throw it in the comments. If you have a question or maybe a tip of your own, throw it in the comments, but be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back um, I know it's been a while, but I'm in medical school. <laughs> so uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. But until then, it's Atlas DMD student. Please don't forget to student. See y'all later.